tonight. Actually, we're kind of slowly coming to a wrapping up of things. In fact, if I counted, the, looked at the calendar correctly and everything, starting counting tonight, we've got four more lessons that will end this in, in the, this year, and we'll start new lesson in January. All right, because we've got this week, next week in November, and then only two Wednesdays in. Uh, in December, because Christmas and New Year's will, will be gone. So by, by that time, we'll be starting some other study. So you might pray about that other study. I have some ideas, but if you've got an idea we'd like to study after Philippians, let me know. All right? Uh, and we'll get to that. But tonight, we're in chapter 4. Chapter 4, maybe when people think of Philippians, they think of chapter 4. Because one of the most quoted, and we're not going to deal with it tonight, but one of the most quoted verses in all the Bible, people just love to bring out, is verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I mean, we've got that on coffee mugs, we got on pictures, we got on bumper stickers, we got on walls. We just love to quote. And, and then it also talks about rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say uh, rejoice. And, and so this is one of those positive, feel good chapters. And we just love Philippians chapter. Four. So we're going to break up in four sections, but we're not going to, uh, we will get that one verse, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Uh, we're going to look at verse one to seven tonight. And if you recall last week, I said verse one is kind of a transitional verse from what we've been talking about and coming uh, to what's coming up here. Also, it kind of looks like a mixed metaphor uh, because uh, in verse 1 it says, Therefore, my beloved and long for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. Uh, and uh, it goes on to talk about running and standing and running and standing. And it says, how does that work out? How do you run and stand? How do you stand and run? Well, you run for the Lord, but you stand in the Lord. You trust Him, you hold on to Him. And you run as he directs our lives. But as we look there, it says, therefore. When we see therefore, what is the first thing we need to ask ourselves? What is therefore? Therefore. Alright? And it is connecting the proceeding to, the, to the what's coming. What have we been talking about in chapter 3 and so forth? What are the various topics he's brought up here? You know? That he said in verse 14 of chapter 3, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God. He says, therefore, let us, uh, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if there's anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Then he goes on and says, follow my example. There in verse 17. And then, you know, our citizenship is in heaven. He talks about who, meaning Christ, will transform our lowly body that it will be conform to his glorious body and because of who what who we're holding to who's doing all this work therefore all right who's doing everything where's our focus our where's everything everything's about what we do is about jesus and that's who who is in verse 21 now we come to verse 1 of chapter 4 therefore my beloved long for brethren my joy and crown so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. Now, when you live in a day when there's persecution, Nero that's on the throne, when there's poverty, when there's heartaches, when there's hardships, when there's difficulty, one of the most important things as Christians we can do is stand fast. Stand firm. Take hold of Jesus and don't let go. Get that bulldog mentality. And don't get pulled away, distracted away, or anything like that. Because Jesus is your source of strength. He's everything you need to continue on as, as Christians. And so the secret to running is to hold on, to stand firm in Christ. Uh, you know, this unchanging grip in our own unchanging Savior in a life that's always changing. You need to have an unchanging grip on Him who doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Forever. But life is going to change. And so we have to hold on to him. Uh, he, you know, he says, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. 
says, it's all about Jesus. It's, it's Jesus and only Jesus. The secret to running an obstacle race, the overcoming the problems of life, is to get a solid grip on Jesus. When I was, uh, before I moved to the farm, so I moved to the farm when I was in ninth grade. So seventh, eighth, uh, and up to ninth grade, right down the street was my best friend here in Oakland City. And he was a hockey player. He went to every camp. He played a little league, if you will. He would later play, play professional hockey. He was good. Uh, nobody thought a hockey player came from Oklahoma. That was one of his problems. He was a little bit short for a hockey player, but he, he did make it into professional hockey later on. But anyway, his name is Sparky. He, him, him and I were best friends. He was just an all-around athlete, played baseball, football, you name it, he played it. Well, I'd never been hockey. I didn't get an ice. But I went with him one time out to Fairgrounds Arena because they had the ice hockey, or the arena, ice break. And I didn't know how to stand an ice. You know, on, on the skates and everything. And so I'm 7th, 8th grade. All night long, I just held on to him and he skated. All night long, I just held on. That's what we got to do with Jesus. Just grab him and go with him. Let him lead. Let him help you through the life, through the ups and downs, through the slick spots, through the ugliness. Keep your hand on Christ. And that's what Paul is saying here. Now, he comes to couple ladies we talked about early on in this book. He says, I implore you also, let me just, fact, let's read the first four verses together. All right. Therefore, my beloved and long for brethren, my joy, crown, uh, joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. I implore Yudia and implore Sinsky to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel with Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. So, again, it's about Jesus. It's about our focus and our grip on him. And he comes to something very practical and a very real issue. Here's two ladies. I urge you also, true companion, or, or excuse me, I implore you to and implore Sinsky to be a, a, to be of the same mind in the Lord. Now, number one, these two ladies have saved. They're Christians. In fact, it implies here that these women have been working with Paul in the ministry. They've been serving the Lord, so they're doing good. They're they're serving the Lord, doing the kingdom work. But somewhere in there, they they start butting heads. Somebody's joked around and says they, they probably got upset with each other in choir loft because one sang one alto and the other one sang something else and they just didn't like the way each other sang or whatever. Uh, doubt that. We don't know what the problem was. But he said, hey, let's get our minds together. It's not about personal agendas. It's not about uh, our personal stuff here. We, let's be of the same mind in the Lord. All right? Conflicts come in church. I, you know, it happens. We rub one another wrong. We say something we don't mean to say. Uh, things happen in church and we get upset and, and we overreact and we re regret it later and so forth. And there's two things he's, he's saying here that we know there's conflict. Conflicts are natural. It's, a, it's just part of being grouped together. I mean, your families have fights and fusses and so forth. Churches will have it. Now, to have it, let it go and split or cause problems, then that's a problem. That's a big, and so he's trying to head it off. So there's two things he's trying to say we need to do. Anybody got a guess? Get your minds together. Get unified in your common purpose, Jesus. It's about Jesus, not about us. All right? Secondly, rejoice. Rejoice. Now, we need to, first of all, always agree to have common ground. When we come to church, when we are participating in stuff, when we are, are uh, uh, worshiping together or in Sunday school class or in the choir or with children or youth or, or senior adults or whatever it is, our first number one goal is, as, as individuals and as a church is Jesus, the gospel, being focused on him, that he gets the glory. Now, 
it's real easy again to bring in personal agendas or preferences or prejudices and so forth and that's where we got to check it out the door and not let those things interfere because his work and his name is higher we belong to him and the kingdom work is eternal and so our little stuff doesn't last and so we need to have this common agreement so he says I implore you to and implore Sinsky here to be of the same mind and, and I urge you also, true companion, help these women. Now, sometimes we got to get us. Hey, guys, let's let's rethink this. Let's. I know you two don't hate each other. Let's love. Let's find a way to get through this. One of the constant challenges of the body is keeping the unity. Because why? Well, the devil loves to cause division. But our natural flesh does too. The, 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 our flesh is filled with pride and, and uh, our own, again, agendas and prejudices and preferences and, and like a, a confusion even. We don't always see things the same. And, and so it's a constant pull away from the center. And the center's got to be Christ. And, and so it's a constant job and work that we find. Now, not only is that constantly trying to find that common ground agreement on Jesus and, and make sure that we always focus on him first and foremost, but I said rejoice. If you have a problem with me, I dare you, when you have a little conflict, you're upset with me, I said the wrong thing, whatever, I dare you the next chance in church, come sit by me and sing songs of Jesus. Because what will happen is if you really get to sing a song for Jesus, you're going to look at me and say, at a whole different light. You're going, to have, you're going to have to find forgiveness in your heart. When we rejoice, we start focusing on Christ again. And, and we find he's really not that bad. You know, he probably didn't mean what he said. You know, that type of thing. And, and so, uh, one of the verses that Richard, we bring up on Sunday mornings and so forth, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, for you, right? The praise is you begin to look at Christ, you see who he is, he's worthy, and you're grateful for all of God's blessings, even though this old cod you're next to you. All right? You begin to see how blessed you are and, how, and you know, what God has done. And so we learn to overcome the issues and see how minor they are because you see what is truly important, what is eternal, and so these are things that's important here. And so he says, you as fellow workers, uh, we're all saved. We're all in the book of life. We're going to spend eternity together. You better start learning how to get along together. All right? And, and so focus on Christ. Get to praising the Lord and worshiping together. All right? Uh, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say rejoice. Can you rejoice too much? We, we can always find things to count on and praise the Lord and give thanks for and, and just learn that even these irritating disagreements and so forth are, are if we put it in perspective, will come around and, and have a different attitude and change things. Now, he goes on and says, okay, now let's, let's display this in, in certain ways in our life. Verse uh, 5 and 6 is, this, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Now, let your gentleness, uh, I think the King James says moderation. What's the other translation say? Forbearing. Forbearing. Now, that's a word we don't use a whole lot. When's the last time you used that term in a conversation with somebody, you know, forbearing? Any other translation words there? Your, your gentleness, your moderation, even that's in that text, context, it seems a little odd. In what we see more and more when you look at the world and you watch stuff, everybody wants to claim their right. I can get angry, I can get mad, you know, and we, and we get vengeance and we get even and, and so forth. 
I have not seen an episode of Yellowstone. Everybody, I've heard a lot of bragging about it and so forth, but the more I watch it, the more I don't want to watch it. I mean, the more I see the commercials. Because even though the, it's interesting, Yellowstone, cowboys, western type life, ranch life, and so forth, but it's, you see the hate, the violence, the ugliness, the anger. I know the older I get, the more that turns me off. And, and this is something as Christians, if we're going to be peacemakers, if we're going to truly, we have to speak with gentleness. What is a, a soft answer? Does what? It turns away wrath. Who should be speaking softly? Who should be uh, di di uh, displaying gentleness here? You know, let your gentleness be known to all men. Soft answers. Gentle. Uh, you know, I'm for one, I've got a temper. You can ask my kids, you can ask my wife, you can ask my dad. You know, they were worried about me growing up. Because uh, I could blow up like that. We all can. We all have tempers. Some of us learn to deal with it a little early. We learn to count to ten. We've done whatever it is we do. Uh, but as a Christian, think about this. We don't belong to self anymore. We belong to Jesus. And, and I represent him, whether on the, you know, the stands at a ball game, or driving down the road and I want to get, you know, ish, you know, display road rage. Uh, or at home, you know, where the neighbors can hear us. All those type of things. It's real easy, real easy for us to lose, lose our temper and so forth. And so we need to pray. It's, Lord, help me learn to gain this thing. I don't want this to be a monster in my life. All right? I want you to be glorified. Now... There's a righteous indignation. What does that mean? There is a right time, a right place to get mad over the right issues. So we just got to learn what those are. And then what the limit is and how, how far it goes. And, and so uh, just learning to, to uh, be under the control of God's spirit. Verse 6 says, be anxious. Or uh, some of the other translations, uh, the King, actually the King James uh, says it a different way. Uh, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Uh, that verse 6 on the Holman, which I think is the same translation in the, in the Bibles in the pew, says, don't worry about anything. In other words, don't, don't be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about anything. But in everything, through prayers and petition, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Be careful. All right. So, the way to not worry is how? Prayer. Let your, say, God, I'm, I'm having problems here and I'm scared about this. I'm not able to meet my bills. Or I've got this kid that's bothering my kids. Or I, uh, my husband keeps coming home this. Or my wife won't agree with me about this. Or whatever. Pray. Whatever it is, the issue is, we pray. He said, God, I'm lifting this up to you. I'm asking you to take care of this. The other night, I had an issue, a phone call about ruining my night. I, I prayed about it. It wasn't 10 minutes. I got another call and all things were settled. Learn to pray. Let, let God have it. Let God take it first before we, let it, before we take it out of bounds, before we let it get in trouble. See, discord can ruin a church. It can ruin the gospel. It can ruin the work of the Lord, the kingdom work. Worry can ruin the Christian, the mind of a believer. And, and, and so... The answer is to focus on Jesus. Get your mind on him, on his cause, on his will. Seek him through prayer, through talking to him, laying it out for him. Take it to Je the old songs. Take it to Jesus. Uh, quote it for me, Richard. You, uh... <laughs> I caught you off guard. 
Tell, no, take it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right, there we go. That's a great song to remind us exactly what prayer is, a benefit. The peace that passes all understanding. The peace that we all need. Uh, 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 it's a pass all understanding. Will guard your hearts and minds. I want you to think, God's peace will put up a, a century in front of your mind. Put on guard duty to protect you. This, we all struggle with frustrations, fear, worry, anger, all these things. These are just natural. It's our, it's our human nature. Every person, none of us is exempt from it. So how do we deal with it? Jesus, focus on him, seek him, ask him, lay it out before him, and he will give us that peace. Either he is the Lord, either he knows what's going on or he doesn't. Either he can handle or he can't. He, you know, he promises that he can take care of us. Either he can or he can't. Will we trust him? Will we seek him? Uh, and so the results is the things that are missing in our life, he supplies. What is it that's missing? The peace. When we're frustrated, when we're angry, when we're worried, when we're you know, upset, when we're struggling... That's, the peace is what's missing. And so, seek him. Uh, pray. You know, for, but in everything. Not just those things we are, you know, say, okay, this isn't big enough. I don't need to take this, Jesus. No, everything. Big or little. Things that we think we can handle, we should still take it to him. All right? Everything by prayer and supplication or request with thanksgiving. Now this Thanksgiving, we'll all say, I'm thankful for my family, I'm thankful for the health, I'm thankful for this nation, I'm thankful for Jesus' salvation. But we thank God for that little snot-nosed kid in the back seat that yelled at you on the way home, or the way to church that morning. We thank God for the flat tire that you had last night. We thank God for those irritating things. When you learn to to get, that you can give thanks for the, even those things, you realize those are not as big a deal. In fact, God may be doing something special in your life. You start to put things in order, in perspective. You know what? There is a sense, you know what? It's no big deal. I can handle this. Because God's got it. He's got it and there's peace. Other scriptures, thoughts, questions that goes along with this? He didn't just save us, keep us out of hell. All right? uh, he wants to be the Lord of every day, every instance, all the issues of every day of our life. And this is the way we let him be the Lord, how we trust him, how he, is, uh, how he uh, wants you and I to grow in trust. Now, verse uh, 8 and 9, we won't get there, but just give you a hint. Verse 8 is one of my all-time favorite verses in all the Bible. All right? And... and so you can start thinking about it, praying about it, looking at it, studying it for next week. But it goes along with this. Our minds is not about feelings. Feelings come afterwards. But our minds, what our minds are on, affects everything else. If our mind's on Christ, if our mind's on eternal things, if our mind takes it from the right perspective with gratitude, with, with uh, trust, then the peace, the contentment, the strength that we need. That doesn't mean the frustrations don't come. Doesn't mean the irritants don't come. Doesn't mean that somebody won't try to make you mad or do the wrong thing or, or you won't have problems. But you'll have the peace through. It isn't that God removes the storms. He gives us the peace in the storms. Other scripture? Other thoughts? Yes, sir. Psalm 121 is beautiful. I lift my eyes to the hills, and notice my help comes from the Lord, 
with you know, we were going. If we're we chartered on that yeah. God, 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 God. Yeah. we chartered on things and it's bad it's, it's, it, and it's also unbelief. Exactly. He wants us to believe, not just about salvation, but again, to believe, to trust Him, to lay our life down upon Him and say, Lord, you got this. You've got everything about me, good, bad, whatever it is, the things that bother me, the things I like. I thank you for it all. I thank you that you're in control. And I thank you that I can trust you. Thoughts, questions, other verses? And this is living Christian life. It, this is where it's at. And it begins to shape you. Uh, but you have to be in the Word. You have to seek Him daily and, and focus on it. Stand fast. And you'll run this race with more peace, with more strength. Just hold on and let Him pull you. Anything else? Let's pray. Yes. Well, when you're a go-getter, you're, you know, uh, ambitious or you take responsibility, whether it be at the job or at the house or, or whatever. I mean, all you guys that have been there, been an office manager, uh, Richard, uh, Julian, Rob, and so forth, all of us, everything weighs down on us. If you're a worker, you have a work ethic, a mom, everything can weigh down on you. How do you handle it? If you just keep letting it pile up on you, you're going to explode. You're going to, you're going to give up. You're going to burn out. Your mind's going to frazzle and your faith will get weaker because you haven't found the strength you need. And it is where you every single day you take even the little things and the big things, but everything. You just begin to walk with him and talk with him and tell him everything. And then you learn, when the big things come along, well, you told him about all this other stuff, you just tell him about this stuff too. And you learn how to trust him. And, and so give thanks in everything. Uh, and doesn't take our responsibility away. Doesn't remove of the frustration away. It just gives us the, the perspective and the, the strength and the joy in handling. Anything else? Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for your grace. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your faithfulness. Father, help us to learn uh, to walk in faith, to walk by your spirit. Uh, to lean upon you to take these principles of Scripture and apply them each and every day. Forgive us of our worrying. Forgive us of our fretting. Forgive us of our selfishness, of our, uh, our, of our anger, of our conflict, of our uh, just being uh, human. Father, that we allow these things to interfere uh, with your will for our life, for our own belief. Father, we are human. We are frail. Uh, but, Father, we want to die to self and let Jesus live through us. Uh, we cannot live this Christian life, but you can through us. And we pray that your spirit would just be real and powerful and just flow uh, as you desire in our lives. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night. God bless.